Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First, I'd like to thank all my co-authors and, of course, the NAS and the Spine Journal Editorial Board for this award. These are our disclosures. Born morphogenetic protein 2 was introduced commercially as a bone graft substitute in 2002. The FDA approved BMP2 use for a single narrow method of spinal fusion, single level anterior lumbar interbody fusion within specific threaded cases. However, over the last 10 years, numerous articles on BMP2 have documented the use for a far wider range of spinal applications, including posterior and transforaminal lumbar interbody fusion, anterior cervical discectomy and fusion, posterior lateral spinal fusion, and more recently, lateral lumbar interbody fusion. A growing number of studies document complications in spine surgery associated with the off-label use of BMP2, which includes end play resorption and subsequent case subsidence, vertebral body osteolysis, retrograde ejaculation and urinary retention secondary to the autonomic plexus irritation after a leaf, ectopic bone formation into the spinal canal or the foramina and radiculitis following pleaf or cleave, significant soft tissue swelling, dysphagia, and airway compromised in anterior cervical in the body fusion, which resulted in an FDA public health notification in 2008, and decreased risk of malignancy when they amplify a BMP2 product with a triple dose of growth factor meant for use in posterolateral spinal fusion. Interestingly, until today, data on the clinical sequel of BMP2 implantation during lateral lumbar in the body fusion remain unknown. As you may already know, lateral lumbar interbody fusion is the minimal invasive retroperitoneal transverse approach that has been developed as an alternative to the well established anterior lumbar interbody fusion. Compared with previous methods of interbody fusion, it is thought to be associated with improved graft host interface, higher fusion rates, improved restoration of the spinal alignment, better indirect foramina decompression by achieving greater correction of the intervertebral and foraminal high, decreased blood loss, early patient mobilization, and decreased hospital stay. Although ELIF has been effectively used in the setting of many adult degenerative disorders, concerns remain about its safety regarding injury of the lumbar plexus as it travels within the psoas muscle. The reported incidence of nerve injury ranges widely from 0.7 to 23%, and according to our recently published data on 919 levels treated with ELIF, Persistent motor and sensory deficits occur in 2.3 and 9.6% of the patients respectively, while a persistent anterior tire groin pain is present in 5.8% of the patients who undergo ELIF. In the same study, when we tried to identify risk factors for the development of postoperative neural deficits in patients undergoing ELIF, we found a significant association between the use of PMP2 and the number of patients suffering from persistent motor deficits at the last follow-up. In order to further investigate the effect of PMP2 on neurological outcomes in this patient population, and keeping in mind that first, BMP2 is a member of the TGF-beta superfamily with receptors present both in the peripheral and the central nervous system, and second, that according to recent evidence, BMPs possess neurotrophic functions we tried to identify an association between postoperative neurological deficits and pain and BMP to use in patients undergoing lateral lumbar interbody fusion. After obtaining IRB approval, the medical records of patients who underwent ELIF between 2006 and 2012 were retrospectively reviewed. Inclusion criteria were patients who underwent ELIF with a supplementary use of iliacris bone graft, cancellus arrow graft on BMP2 patients who underwent spinal fusion for degenerative spinal conditions and a minimum follow-up of six months. Patients with prior thoracolumbar spine surgery were excluded. A total of 451 patients met the inclusion criteria and were divided into two groups based on the use or not of PMP2. Matching for any possible factor that may have affected nerve injury and recovery, including length of follow-up, patients' age, gender, weight, BMI, Total number of spinal segments treated, specific levels treated, standalone procedure, site of approach, and operative time resulted in a total of 72 patients and a total of 147 levels treated per group. Traditional neuromorphism and triggered EMZ were used in every patient, and our start on BMP dosing protocol was to load each cage with 4.2 milligrams of the adjunct 
administered by an absorbable collagen sponge, which was sold for at least 15 minutes before application according to the manufacturer recommendations. Immediately after surgery, a sensory deficit was recorded in 33 patients in the PAB2 group and 35 patients in the autograft allograft group. At the last follow-up, a persistent sensory deficit was identified in 29 patients who underwent LF supplemented by BMP2 compared with 20 patients in whom autograft or allograft was used. Although this difference was found to be significant, a trend towards increased persistent sensory deficits was recorded in patients exposed to BMP2. When we tried to evaluate it for postoperative motor deficits, things were more clear. With a significantly higher number of patients exposed to BMP2 suffering from persistent motor deficits, both at the six-month postoperative visit and the last follow-up. More impressively, postoperative pain was found to be present in a significantly higher number of patients exposed to BMP2 in the immediate postoperative period, the six-month follow-up visit, and the last follow-up. It is also worth mentioning that during the last follow-up, none of the patients treated with iliac crest bone graft or allograft had pain, compared with 12% of the patients exposed to BMP2 who were complaining of persistent anterior tire groin pain. These findings are also reflected in the calculated odds ratio, with the odds ratio for persistent motor deficits and the odds ratio for persistent anterior tire groin pain during the last follow-up being 3 and 16.4 respectively for patients exposed to BMP2. In summary, the use of BMP2 resulted in a higher number of patients with neural deficits during the immediate postoperative period and a higher number of patients with persistent neurologic deficits at the last follow-up suggesting, first, an adverse effect of BMB2 on nerve physiology, and second, an inhibitory action on nerve recovery, respectively. Although a higher number of both motor and sensory deficits was recorded, only motor deficits reached statistical significance. Our results also provide evidence of an increased rate of postoperative pain using BMP2. So this is the first study to implicate BMP2 as a potential risk factor for both neural deficits and pain after lateral lumbar interbody fusion. Comparison of a large number of treated levels with and without the use of BMP2 after addressing all possible confounding factors makes this finding likely. In view of our findings, a strict interoperative protocol was adopted at our institution, which includes soaking the adjunct for at least 45 minutes before application to increase BMP2 retention, cautious handling of the BMP2, copious irrigation after case placement, and local steroid administration. Patients are also preoperatively counseled regarding postoperative pain and neural deficits with BMP2 use. Finally, other possible BMP2 related adverse events, such as case subsidence, are under investigation by our team. Thank you for your attention.